Damian. So welcome everyone. Um, we really we want to thank everybody who participated in the coaching conference that happened already almost a month ago. Supervision conference. Coaching supervision, thank you. I'm waking up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, I wanna, we want to thank also Mary, who's here with us today, because she... Wave, Mary! ...part of our team. We could have done that with, without her. And um, we were going to do the session, the program in Mexico, Mexico City. And Susie, who is here, she was supposed to have a party in her home, and we're all getting ready. But uh, unfortunately, we had to do it virtually, but the... Good news was that we were able to um, bring more people from all over the world. It was easier for people to participate. So uh, instead of having 70 people, this is what we had in the last first two conferences, uh, we had uh, 115 people coming for tw from 20 countries. And we had 20 presentations. And the idea today is to just share the learnings. So we're going to go to groups, and the idea is to split between people who were at the conference and people who were not. So you get to learn what were the key takeaways from the participants. So we are not going to be um, uh, here doing the presentations that happened during the conference, but we want you to share your experiences. So I don't know, Lily, if you want everybody to introduce each other or should we jump to groups? What, what do you want to do, Lily? I always like people to say their name and where they're calling in from to yeah, come into the space. So let's do that if we can do that. Yeah. Let's do that. And do you want to make me the co-host to put together the groups? I will really do better. I'll make you the host so I don't have any responsibility. <laughs> so, so why don't you facilitate this piece? Meanwhile, I put together the groups with the people that I know that were at the conference and the, the people who are not. All right, let's do that. So you're the host now, Damien. Because I don't know if you can do groups without being host. So we want a group, really we want a group of four. Yeah, four or five. Let's make it five and then if there's a four, there's four. Um, so let's uh, say your name and where you're calling in from and one feeling that you're present to in your body right now. I'm Michel from Paris. Feel good. Thank you. I'm Sylvie from Oxford. Enjoying the sunshine here. This is Naomi and I'm in the United States. I'm excited to hear what other folks are going to say. Kathleen Stinnett in Seattle, Washington. Intrigued. I'm Gilda from Brazil and happy to be back. I am Jaya from India. I'm excited to go over because I could not attend a lot of presentations due to the timings. So I'm just trying to catch up. Diane Whiting from Dallas, Texas, feeling relaxed. And Oliveira Pint from Portugal, Lisbon, and curious to know what was the learning from the ones that have attended the conference. We learned how to dance. <laughs> <laughs> we learned who could dance. To see one man, yeah. nice to see you all. It's uh, David from Toronto, Canada, and uh, just getting going this morning. Michael from Montreal, gasping for a coffee. John Elvira Ado TV. Sorry, John Elvira. I'm John Elvira Ado TV. I'm calling from Paris, feeling gratitude to be part of this group. Kim, nice to see I'm you. Kim. Hello, I'm in Los Angeles, and I have come curious today. Nice. And are you outside? I am indeed. Looks nice. <laughs> I'm Lillian from New Jersey, and just happy to see everybody. Uh, I'm Ines from Buenos Aires, Argentina, and so excited to reconnect with you all. Marissa from Calgary, and I am caffeinated and excited to hear the learnings from everyone. I'm Alexis from LA on my way to caffeinated and feeling nice and grounded. Good morning, everybody. This is from Mexico City. This is Mauricio and enjoy everybody's conference. This is Terry Hildebrand from Denver, Colorado and 
I'm excited because I am ready to apply for my ESIA with the EMCC. And this is Catherine from Durango, Colorado, and I'm feeling really connected with this group now more than before. And this is uh, Pilar Galvan from Mexico City, and happy to see all of you again. I'm Jo Portanier. I'm based in Toulouse, France, and I find this joyful being connected to all of you, so I'm happy to be here. Mary Crowley from Comox Valley, and excited to start my week. And I just got my coffee delivered, so that's all good. <laughs> Guys are killing me. <laughs> I'm Danielle from uh, Montreal, Canada. Uh, as uh, some has already said, I'm curious to know what we uh, learn and what we keep, and also very happy to see uh, faces that I now know more, faces that I recognize, of people that I know more. Okay, my. <laughs> Iris Rosario, I am calling from San Diego, California. I'm very excited to be here. I'm very grateful. Hi, my name is Corinne. I'm from Quebec City. I'm very happy to and curious to learn about you and that meeting. I'm Petra from Germany, and I cannot believe it's been a month. Hello, um, Lali from Venezuela, and I'm uh, very happy here. I couldn't attend the 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 days of the reunions prior prior to this. Uh, very curious about what happened over there. Nice to see you, Lali. <clears throat> Anybody else? And of course, I'm I'm coming in from Victoria, where it's quite drizzly right now. <clears throat> so send me some of that sun. And Damien. Damien from Los Angeles, and I am waking up. <laughs> Still half asleep. But wake up enough to be able to put the rooms together, Lily. We can they are ready now? Together. Okay. I was stalling for you. It worked, did it? Okay. The people from the conference and people who are not. So the people who are at the conference can share their experience. All right, so we're going to put it for 20 minutes. Is that good or 25? What do you think? 25. Let's 25. see how 25 goes. Give you a good, robust conversation. So it's not really to recount the different sessions, but more of what did you learn? What's still resonating with you? I took a, a little bit of a, a journaling the other day, and there's like eight questions that are still in my mind from that conference. And that's a sign of a good conference for me is that I'm left wondering more than I got answers to. All right, so let's open up the rooms. Damien, you're the, you're the, yeah, we're going to the you'll need now. to open them. Yeah. And we'll be so, back in 25 minutes. Great. So I will let people know when you have five minutes left. You will let, okay. Hello. I'm with Hello. my buddies. <laughs> Hello. Nice to see you all. Yes, nice to see you all again. It's, it's incredible, a, a one month passed by. I know, it's crazy. And Naomi, you were there too, right? Were you at the conference? I think I saw you fleetingly. So we all have experience. Yes, I missed the first half, the first three or four hours. Okay. But I was there after that. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Wow, and it's so nice to see you all again. Is Kim there? We cannot listen to her or see her. Oh, Kim, hello. Hey, 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 hey. She's, she's I'm walking from an yeah. I'm walking back from an appointment, so that's why I don't have my video on because I would be doing this. I'll have it on when I get stationary and can sit down outside. Perfect. Hey. Thank you. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. I wouldn't want to be outside today. We have 10 degrees Celsius and it's been freezing this morning. What? Yeah. <laughs> it was cold in Michigan yesterday for in the day before in the 30s. Yeah. In, in LA? 
Are you in LA? In, in Michigan. Oh, Michigan. Okay. I'm just pulling up the email that I wrote. I wrote a little blog to put on the website. Just to remind me of maybe I didn't keep it. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Let me do it by memory then. Go ahead. Who wants to start? I've been working with the voices, multiple voices. Um, and I've done it three times now with three different groups. And each time there's one person that says, that's ridiculous. That's just too abstract. I can't do that. And afterwards, the same person in each of those groups said to me, I had no idea how powerful that could be. Um, so I, I just love that when folks completely shift their attitude about something in a positive way. It's just been great. Nice application. <clears throat> I've been using more uh, of the different practices. I like the variety of, of tools and approaches that we've seen, and I used it in group supervision, which I didn't have much experience as individual supervision, and I liked it. Um, it was powerful. So which tool? Uh, for example, using um, an image which image do you do you find if you use um, the, the the pictures? Those those were very powerful to me. Mm, nice. And and they connect very very soon, you know. With what image do you connect with, and uh, how does it resonate with you? And I like that, especially because I thought it wasn't possible to use images or cards being online. And to me, it seemed very um, powerful. And the other one was choose an object in the room that represents what you feel here. And um, even if we didn't have your magic box, which was kind of uh, a constraint for me to use it online, so I said, okay, what something smaller would be like connect with one object that resonates to you with this case or with a situation. Mm, nice. Nice. I wonder about when you use physical cards, the pictures, did you yes. just choose them? Like choose three or four? No, yeah. I just show them several pictures. And sometimes I, I like I use uh, I scan them or something like that so that you can pass them. Oh, I get it. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I've just been using yeah links online either to a Dropbox folder where I put some photos or to different art sites. Oh, nice. Oh, I like the art sites. That's a great idea. Yeah, that would be really creative, especially like the contemporary art. Um, and I will ask the participants to bring a picture that represents, like I'm starting a team coaching session group, and I will be asking them their first session to bring a picture that represents how they would like this team to operate. <clears throat> nice. And with the magic box in this, um, you can ask them to walk around the room and pick 12 items randomly and bring it and use them. You don't have to have a box. <clears throat> nice and that's that would be prior to the session or when the session starts either either usually I wait until it starts because then we're talking about something and then they and then it's like okay well feel free to pick some things and work with it if, if you'd like and that way they have the question in their mind and they're subconsciously picking things and it yeah. is actually can be a more powerful session than actually having a box and I imagine <laughs> touching it too it's very tactile yeah. Oh, man, that's yes. great. Yeah. Yes. And it really you. touches your subconscious. You don't realize until you keep unpacking it and what else and what else and things come up that it's like very powerful. Yes. Thank you. Lily, I'm super curious to hear some of your, well, I'd love to hear all of your eight questions, but I'd love to hear some of your questions that you're musing on. Oh, well, let me pull up my email then if you, if you. 
if you what were the questions me um, sorry i didn't hear correctly the question from kim she was asking me what the questions were i would i have written a blog to post okay and I actually put some questions on it the ones that i'm left with oh i would love that Oh, now the pressure's on. <laughs> no, the, no worries. Even if it is work in progress on the podcast. Oh, no, it's, it's ready to go. I, I can't pull it up fast. It, I'll actually post the, the um, one of them is around COVID Springs. We had this great conversation with Peter Hawkins and um, Pam McLean on, you know, what is COVID Springs all about for me? Uh, the other was a, a, a quote that someone used, and I, I, I apologize, I don't have the attribute, but it was, you know, we're all in the same storm, we're just in different boats. Mm -hmm. And that resonated with me, because people were saying, you know, we're all in this big storm together. And I'm thinking, well, yeah, we are, but it's slightly different. And so that really, being in a different boat resonated. Seeing my husband's a sailing instructor, it really rang true. <laughs> um, and what did Pam McLean say? Um, she really appreciated being in her bubble and really being at home and appreciating her surroundings and seeing it for the first time. People were saying, well, I've lived in this house, but I travel so much, I, I don't get to enjoy it. And so that was a nice, yes, that's how I feel too. It's like, wow. I just get to be here and tune out the world. I don't even go grocery shopping. My husband does all of that. And it's like, I feel so privileged and, and special to be here, enjoying my little space. Absolutely. And having someone to do the grocery for you, that's <laughs> wonderful. I remember walking in to go grocery shopping and just looking at the people and going, no, I'm not going in there. And turning around and going out, even though on Vancouver Island, we've had no new cases for, I want to say, over a month. So people are starting to feel safe. But as the news gets out, we're going to get more and more visitors. So now I start getting nervous right. again. And it's not so much nervous about, I just don't have an urgency to be out there with crowds. Now we've had sections of Michigan uh, who are in the resort areas around the lakes, all lakes around us. Mm. Um, and they decided in early April they're shutting down for the summer. They're not doing any festivals or anything so that the only thing they have to deal with are the people who come to their own private areas. Um, and they're very, very nervous about it kicking up again. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're saying the second wave has arrived, so. Oh, okay. Mauricio, how yes. are you? Yes, how are you? Just listening to you. Here in Mexico, of course, I have also my food delivered to me every every week or so. Even though I have a lot of a lot of frozen meats and vegetables, but uh, people are not necessarily as conscious as they should be. Um, and I could just looking at my window. Of course, uh, there's a lot, not a lot of cars. There's a lot a lot of traffic, but there seems to be there. Less a lot of people are really just doing their their thing and not being conscious with all the debts that, that uh, well, Mexico and other places have as well. But I'm keeping myself key, uh, here and doing Zoom, doing, doing work. So basically, that's basically it. And in reference to the conference, obviously, there is a lot of different, different uh, knowledge that I've acquired. Of course, using the 7i of Hawkins, obviously, that's still resonates with me. And I was trying to think of the other presentations, but offhand, I can't seem to recall some of them. So basically. Great, thank you. So Kim, what are you most curious about? I'll stop here. Hey, hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I'm curious, how do I keep supervision fresh for myself and for those I work with? Um, yeah, just new ideas or new, new curious angles to help people engage in new ways. Mm, great question. 
What do others think? I often wonder about how am I going to know when I have enough techniques to keep me fresh? Because <laughs> um, I know that I have three or four things I do every single time. Mm. And I'm, I've, I've only been officially supervising coaches for less than a year and I'm already getting bored with some of those. Um, okay. So I, but I don't want to overwhelm myself. I know that, I know that when I came around from, came away from the conference, I had so many options. I had to set it aside to even consider which ones I wanted to pursue. Um, and I don't want to get stuck in that place that I feel overwhelmed. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to find that balance. I don't know what that is. I don't know what the clues are for me yet. Mm. Uh, if I, I'm curious, Naomi, um, now that you talked about the voices, I haven't used that, that technique yet. So can we double click just a minute to see how it worked for you? Mm -hmm. That's okay with me. Is that okay um, for, the, for the group? Because sure. that's new to me as well. So as I played it out, um, I would suggest, I would uh, describe, we're going to do coaching supervision differently this time. Um, and that we're going to focus on the voices that are in the case that's going to be presented. Uh, so I invite the presenter to name the voices without giving any details. Just the, what is their relationship to the case, like the mother-in-law or the owner of the business or whatever. Um, and then I invite volunteers for each of them. Um, not necessarily, their gender is not necessarily an issue, but if they can get into the, what they imagine that person might be, um, then I, they sign up and then I turn, we turn our attention to the presenter and the coach then describes whatever the case is. Um, and by, and I invite then when the, the coach is ready, then to invite other voices to respond to what the coach has said. Um, and to my surprise in every group, um, I think one group had four voices and another group had six voices. Um, and every time the voices took their time responding, there was, I got no sense of pretend for them, um, I, which was the most surprising and satisfying that they really did get into it. Um, and on one occasion, that voice and the coach had a conversation that lasted maybe three or four minutes. That was just an amazing thing to watch. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, then in the debrief, when we talked about the process, um, there was not one person that was still dissatisfied or apprehensive about it. Uh, so now I have to decide how often I want to do the, do that technique. Uh, but that's an easier issue to address. Yeah. I was surprised. It was like playing. It was really had a whole new play and element to it. It was fun. Nice. That kind of reminds me of my magic box when I first discovered it. I used it a lot until I thought, ooh, I don't want to be a one-trick pony. <laughs> I better start using other tools. So now I only use it maybe once every three months or if somebody asks for it. I don't even think about it unless it kind of draws my attention. So what's one of your favorite tools right in this season? Me? Yeah. Um, um, uh, vo uh, chairs. I'm using a chair you know the empty chair technique? Uh-huh. Yeah, I use that sometimes. Very powerful. I do when a person I, stuck. Yeah, can, can you double click on that please? Um, yeah, if the person is having a conflict with someone, like one of my clients had a conflict with her mother, I invited her to physically get a chair from another part of her room and put it in, uh, facing her and imagine her mother is sitting in that chair and say what you want to say to your mother. And sometimes you can actually get the participant to actually sit in the chair of the mother and answer from the mother's perspective as well. Depends on how far you want to go with it. But she didn't feel she could say certain things to her mother this way. She was able to release some of that energy. Yeah, that's so I've a... used it two or three times. It's quite powerful, but very judiciously. Sorry, Do go you... ahead. Do you use that technique also like uh, first, second, and third position? Like then the, the mother or the, the empty chair responds back? You can. You can. Depends. Okay. Um, it, in one, I just used it with 
saying what she needed to say to release it. Um, mm -hmm. The other one I did where, yeah, she went into the chair and answered from the person she's having a conflict with perspective. And imagine they are in that shoes, their shoes, something similar to the voices that Naomi's talking about, right? So, yeah. What would that and person that, say? Yeah, like uh, getting into other people's shoes is what I call the second, the second, the second position. And then the third position would be like neutral, seeing the I-7 of the situation. Yeah. yeah, then you come back. There's other techniques you can use that are physical as well. Like I've worked with Alan Seal where he'll say, well, let's stand up and let's imagine that thing is in front of you. And now look at it from the top down and then look at it from the bottom up and then move around the four quadrants and look and just notice things without judging it. Just notice what you notice. And now let's come back to the chair of the supervisee and talk about what did you notice and what meaning do you make of it? Nice. And you can use, just look out your window and how does that relate to what you're talking about? It's amazing what people come up with. Yeah, I've used the empty chair when I'm coaching someone toward mediation. They're just terrified of confronting the person. And that's one, oh, of, the, yes. one of the things that I would invite them to practice and then unpack it. So do you think you'd want to do that? And if so, then we go into coaching. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you. Yes. How about you, Kim? What are you using that's different? You've been a supervisor now for what, six years, five years, six years? It's been a while. Uh, yeah, you know, I find what I'm doing more of these days is bl bl because primarily I'm a trainer. Mm. And so I feel like I'm using a lot of the supervision techniques in the training space because so much training, right? It's creating learning environments <laughs> mm -hmm. where it's not just about the content, but about using the group. And what I've loved in the COVID season is I'm not flying. And so everything's on Zoom. And when you've got six hours or something, you know, multiple days, it's forced me to try new things. And so um, I want to, you know, just like you mentioned, getting an object, I'm trying to do anything I can to get the person to stand up, get a different perspective, whether they go outside for a couple minutes and um, use their senses or they go take a photo of something outside and come back and use that to kind of the same things we're all talking about. But for me, it's how do I combine the senses and the physical? I've been just experimenting in that space. Um, like I said, which is related to the supervision kind of space of how do we catalyze, you know, new awareness um, with some different, and use the sensory in the body, so. Mm, nice, nice. That whole body thing really is a game changer for so many people. Um, because I, the people I work with, I'm real aware that they are either in their head trying to be logical with things that are not reasonable or they're so detached from their own body, their physical self, that it's like they're having out of body experiences. I don't know how to name that. And all this struggling they're doing, there's like, they're only giving themselves capacity to use this top of their head rather than their whole being. And some folks I've been working with for a long time and they're not going to go to the body. They're just not. <laughs> Where other people are, they are, it's like a whole new universe has been open to them, which indeed it has. And I, and they don't think logically anymore. I mean, it's just great fun for them to, well, what would happen if I would do this? Or if I said it this way, or if I stood over here, or if I wore that shirt he hates, or, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Are there other things people are experimenting with that you that got catalyzed at the conference? Well, I've been was... trying to figure out the Lego thing. Mm. I've always liked Legos. And my problem with using Legos is I'd rather play with them than actually try to illustrate some, somebody else's stuff. So I abandoned that after two or three tries and I'll probably come back to it at some point. But... Yeah, I've used Lego too. It's, it's lots of fun, especially with um, teams. Like I use it with team coaching. <clears throat> and before we go into the set, oh, well, I do one one round of creating safety. So it's like build a tower with your Legos that you have. And, and then we just have a look and debrief and talk about they're all different, but they're still towers. And 
because I've had some participants that say, oh, um, I haven't done this for 50 years. I feel really intimidated or I've never used Lego from a cultural perspective. They've never owned Legos or played with them. So, so that creates a baseline. And then I go to, okay, build what you would like this team to look like. And then the final one is, you know, combine them all now and have a conversation and build something that represents the team moving forward and all, and, and ensure that whatever's important to you from your picture gets represented in the picture that you want moving forward, the most important element or negotiated. So. What I thought of is that there are fun. some Legos, there are some Lego sets that come with like a, I don't know, it's a six inch by six inch Lego board. And what you build has to sit on that. And I can imagine with some teams I work with that people will build their own that's so big that there's no room for all of them. So some of them are actually off, hanging off that mm. platform. That would be an interesting conversation. That would be a conversation in itself, yes. Yeah. What does that represent exactly? Yeah. And all we do is notice what they've done and who, who had the power in all of that, right? And you can buy bigger, bigger um, boards. So I've got the little ones for the individual, and then I have a bigger one for when they build um, the team one. Or maybe you can ask them to, in order to build the team one all together, that they need to put all the boards together. Maybe. As a condition, like could be. No, no boards could be left aside. You can do whatever you want, right? It's all play. That's why I'm they call thinking. it Lego play. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking out loud. Like yeah. if they are um, talking, it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. It's, you, know, you. you can make meaning of the colors they choose, right? And have each other notice things without making judgments, you know, notice things what, about what your colleague chose without making judgments like I noticed that you used mainly black and white I'm wondering if there's meaning behind that um, I'm wondering why there's a, a chunk of purple in the middle of this particular piece like just notice and sometimes there's no meaning sometimes there's meaning yeah and I started to buy the little Lego figurines too but that can get expensive <laughs> So I've kind of abandoned that after, I think I have 12 of them. And it's like, and how it's hard to find diversity in the Lego pieces though. Right. How do you work with Legos uh, being online? Well, I haven't done it online yet. That's a okay. great question. I guess it depends if they have Lego or not. Or if they have the same set. But I also found Michelle Morales in, interesting how he built a grid and said, where would you like me to place this piece? A 10, right? All right. And move it around the grid. That takes extra effort. And I think it takes it out of the, the body because you're very intellectually placing things. But I mean, it's another way to, to play with it. Hey, Kim. Now you're sitting on a deck chair. <laughs> Oh, okay. I wish I were there. What else? We have a minute. Who wants Can to report out? You? Oh, uh, their, their learning was very interesting about the chains. Oh, yes. That was an interesting concept and helps us to continue having our own practice as supervisees. Yeah, I've been in the chain for three and a half years. And we're just getting started with a new chain. Some of the cohort participants from uh, Damien's classes. Nice, he's, nice. He's excited about that. So Kim, what did you learn from us? Well, it sounds like it was a really rich time. I think my inspiration is just try to, think, even though I haven't heard all of the ideas, I think you've inspired me to think of new, some fun new things because I'm about experimenting and, you know, yeah, putting some different pieces together to try some things. So nice. thank you for catalyzing and inspiring.
my favorite part was dancing to shake your sillies out <laughs> singing at the top of my voice and dancing and shaking my sillies out it was so much fun that was sam mcgill and um what is her name from uh, denver colorado um no not denver ohio columbus yes po -Yi. Po -Yi. yes that was fun i had by your memory so many oh, people. It took me a while. <laughs> was she in your group, Kim Poyi? Uh -uh. I, I didn't say no. I okay. shared. Okay. I shared some activities with her, and it was very interesting. Cool. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry you mentioned it at the end. I would have liked to see a demonstration. Exhausted. <laughs> Exhausted. It, it was many hours during the day. My suggestion is maybe more days, not uh, not many conferences that we that we had in this last conference. I agree. I agree. I was asking Lily, Lily, what were th what we were thinking when we came up with these schedules? But the idea was we didn't want to miss anything. We want to be sure that everybody had the chance to go to all of the sessions. So to doing that, we didn't have any parallel sessions. What well, maybe next year we we, we have to do different, um, be, differently because this year we said, okay, what we're going to do. The advantage will be that we will have all of the sessions. Everybody will be able to go to all of them if they want to, without expecting. Like you, Adri, you you didn't miss anything. <laughs> Expectation or not to start like. We started at 7 a.m. in the morning and we went till 8 p.m. at night. So there were 13 hours days. Uh, full of uh, sessions. Uh, what at the beginning seemed a good idea, but then at the end, we, we were, no, it was too long, too much. Um, but as a result but of we, that, we encouraged people not to go to all of them because we knew it would be a long day, Adriana. <laughs> yeah, <you laughs> and we did that on purpose. We, we did that on purpose so we could work. start with um, North America and Europe, and then the, at the end, we could include. Uh, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, so they didn't feel like they only had to listen to recordings. So um, I actually thought it was it was a, a way to be more inclusive because I just did the EMCC and I only got to one session, the one that we delivered on. Yes, <laughs> and I didn't watch any, any of the other ones because they were totally in the middle of the night. So I don't know, it's hard to, and we get complaints all the time about, you know, we want to go to three of them instead of one, you know, we only see all of them. So that's why, and every, all the speakers were really great about, they wanted to continue because we thought if a couple dropped out, that would might make a difference, but everybody wanted to. So we included everyone. So yeah, there were so many different design things to think about for sure. And it was really exhausting when you, when you had to be there for the eight, 12 hours versus I just want to be here for everything. <laughs> One thing so I, we, I thought, I'm sorry. No, no, we're going to say now let's hear from some people who want to share something that you hear, that you share at the rooms now or anything you want to share. Uh, Ines, go ahead. What, uh, I found that the long hours were very well uh, balanced with the 15 minute break and some uh, conferences that were including physical movement like shaking silly out, or silly said. So it was quite balanced, yes. So whenever, if, if we repeat that, is interesting. For the people who stay all day, that I, like I did, the 15 minute break and the, and the activities that balance body and movement uh, um, helps us a lot. Who would like to share? To, with everybody. One of the things that I I took away that I think I've noticed before in in conferences, but particularly cemented in this one was was that we work very much on our own most of the time. There isn't a kind of apprenticeship training. So watching demonstrations of techniques of ways of being um, especially when you had groups of people working in different ways to, to compare 
I think is just worth reading a, a thousand textbooks. I was watching Lily demonstrating her magic box that helped me get involved in this group. So it was magic. In our breakout, we, um, I mentioned Michelle's uh, session and we talked about the grid that he was using to help people move things around. And then in the group supervision one, I think the idea of Legos came up. So now I have a, a package of Legos, <laughs> um, mini, mini figures, if and when I want to do something different than Lily's magic box. Anybody else? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah the, I think something really great was dividing us in the small groups because that really made us one, uh, know each other, which now we, wherever group we go, we feel comfortable. And it, it gives us this special thing in this group that we're, we all feel part of this group for for one way or another, but this really helped. And, and it also helped to be vulnerable and be able, it's hard sometimes in larger groups to say what you really feel. And in the smaller groups, we were able to do it. So we, we thought that was really, really helpful. Okay, thank you, Susie, for saying that. Because with Lily, this is one of our goals with this network is to create this sense of community. Like we super coaching supervision, sometimes can be lonely. So we want to be sure that we have a network where we can support each other. So we can use this network not only to get presentations once a month, and we're going to let you know in a few minutes what's coming up, but also all we have time to interact with each other and learn from each other. And knowing if you have questions or if you need anything, you have a community of, of practice here. And we also want to use our LinkedIn group more actively. So this is a good place. If you need anything, if you need resources, or if you have something to share, or if you know anything that can be helpful for other supervisors, uh, we are using with Lily now the LinkedIn group for the American Coaching Supervision Network as a place to go and share information or ask for what you need. And then in our website, we have a lot, all of the recording from the last three years, and they are amazing presentations. So take advantage of, of our website. Sometimes people don't know that our recordings are available. And uh, it's a great resource. I think uh, uh, worldwide, I don't think there is any other place where you can go and get so much information about supervision in videos from great speakers. So, so take advantage of that and that's for free, available for everybody. So anybody else would like to share? I'm just going to make a link with what you, did, you said, Damian. In our yes. group, we talk about the identity of American Coaching Supervision Network. And we say that it was a very special identity because when you come here, you are really seen, recognized, acknowledged. And it's very, it's not something you find everywhere. So it makes things very easy to, to get to interact with other people. And, um, and also that um, the vulnerability that helps also, you know, uh, because when we are vulnerable, we allow other people to be vulnerable as well, which helps a lot. So this, we talk a lot about the identity of, um, of this group, and it is just lovely. Thank you. Great. Great. And, and originally with Lily, we wanted to bring awareness to, the, to America, the Americas about what is coaching supervision, but we really want to do this open to everybody who wants to participate. So this is what makes this richer having people like you from Europe joining us, sometimes people from Asia. It's not a good time for Asia this time, but uh, everybody's welcome and we cannot learn from each other. So, so thank you for, for being here. We wanna be sure we include everybody who wants to be part of that. And even, this is not only for supervisors, it's also for coaches interested in the topic, may not wanna be supervisor, but they wanna still learn. So we also welcome coaches here in this network. I don't know, Lily, if you wanna add anything to this. No, I, I think you're on track and, and the idea is to create this network in this community. So we love it that you say your name into the space. We love it that we get into small groups and meet different people. 
we love it that we have speakers from around the world like this is all part of this being connected because as somebody did know we it can be a lonely place sometimes mm -hmm. if, I've, I've actually started doing co-supervision with individuals where we take a group together so that we're learning from each other as well and, and noticing other techniques and and styles from different schools has been great too uh, building what you what you said in the first split in the small groups we introduced ourselves but having the diversity from from uh, asia and europe um, even if we didn't if we'd had short time for discussion we used one minute or two in order to keep introducing ourselves and that built building it emerged but moving forward i say that i would say that's a keeper like one minute because we we would switch groups and it was so refreshing meeting new people every time that we we wanted to get to know each other before we get to, we got to, to share and work. So the spirit was there. Now something that came out from the conference, uh, we had a session on marketing and how to sell services as coach supervisors. And what came out from that was uh, the possibility to work in small mastermind groups. So for people who want to work with other colleagues, thinking together about how to be more creative and effective about selling services um, as supervisors and also coaching if you want to. So there were some groups created. And if you are interested in that, again, in the LinkedIn group, you will see that there is information there about who are facilitating the formation of some of these mastermind groups. So this is open, available to anybody who wants to participate. And the other thing that came up is for people who are supervising and have supervisees, uh, the idea is to have some um, chains. So we have a session of coaching chains where people get together and it's like peer supervision where you supervise each other in a, in a chain and you rotate who supervises you and who you supervise. So the idea is in a chain, you may have around 10 people and every format you rotate who supervises you and who you supervise. And in that way, you uh, can receive supervision and offer supervision to somebody else as part of the group or part of the chain. And, and we really, we have been doing that for a few years. And we want to be sure that people here in this network are familiar with this strategy and can take advantage of that. So also some uh, chains have been formed. Um, and I think that is also in the LinkedIn group, if I'm not wrong. So we want to also bring that. These, these were two topics that we covered at the conference and we want to also to have a follow-up so the idea we live is also this community has some projects. So we are going to start a, a research group. Some of you have already signed up for that. So if you are still interested, is there a date, Lily, for the next meeting? Yeah, I think it's next week or the week after. There's a group. I think there's about 10 of us, 12 of us. Um, Francine Campong has accepted the lead of the research group. So we're talking about different things that we want to be doing some research on. And so if you're interested, get hold of her. And, and I just want to also remember Terry is here and he runs this uh, marketing mastermind group every two months as well. Terry, you want to just mention it? Absolutely. So uh, every other month we have a um, America's wide uh, mastermind group for marketing and that's where we launched these other two smaller groups um, that are more regional. One is more for the East Coast. The other is more for West Coast and Mountain. Uh, so you get a chance to communicate and partner every other month with the big group um, uh, that Jeff, uh, Nally and I are co-leading and have been for about three years. And those recordings are also on the America Supervision Network. So you can listen to those and get caught up if you wanna hear all things about marketing if you want a more intimate experience where you want to be held more accountable and are interested in working more regionally, um, then you can join uh, one of the, the smaller groups as well. Yeah. And Terry just published a book with a chapter on coaching supervision. 
So maybe you want to make this information available to everybody in the LinkedIn group so people can go there and collect the data and information. You can put it here in the chat room if you want to, but I think the LinkedIn place will be a good place for people to know about the book and, and this new chapter in coaching supervision. And um, I think that is helpful for everybody to, to know what are the new, newest resources around coaching supervision, read chapters, books. This is, uh, I think, helpful. Ah, and by the way, probably you all know the the, the paper from uh, Joel Di Girolamo, I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. The jo Joel's paper about uh, literature on supervision. You remember that one? So we, it's, it's only on English speaking um, research. And with Tatiana, with this, uh, and also Jonathan Passmore. We have redone the same kind of uh, literature, uh, looking at all the literature, but in English, in French, and in German. So, it's, it's, so yeah. can you share that also, Michel, in the LinkedIn group so people can have access to that? Yeah, well, once it's out, I mean, uh, the paper has been, uh, I mean, it's, it's done. Now it's, uh, it's going to be out probably within, I don't know, I mean, it's, it's close to be out now. Right. So, uh, so I think it's a, it's a refresh of, of uh, Joel's work, but with several languages. Yeah, and Damien, I think there's already a post in the LinkedIn group about the supervision chapter yet. Great. And, and well, Damien so and Lily, sorry to waste time on this, but I, I'm on the LinkedIn site and with America's Coaching Supervision Network, I can't see, other than list, looking at the individual posts, where to find all these recordings. Oh, so, you have to go to the actual website. It's not on LinkedIn, it's on, web, on the website. We have a America Supervision Network website. Got it. Thank you. I, I misheard okay, no, that. Thank you. You got that. No problem. Yeah. And also, there was a request about the research. Um, when we get organized and, and Francine gets organized, we will definitely be coming out to this group for interest in what, what you want to participate in and, and also to be part of the research that's happening. And, and we're so, really open to ideas. If anybody has any ideas, anything you would like to do with the network, let us know. And we may organize it. We're here open, really open to ideas. Yes, I'm So sure. Also, this book, I just, I received it this morning. Mm -hmm. And there is a chapter on research. Yay, that must be mean mine is coming too. <laughs> <laughs> it's, an, it's an updated version of Peter Hawkins' book. Yeah, but, but with a new chapter on research. So. Nice, so, nice. Great, great. Chapter great. 15. So Lily, we have a minute. Do you want to uh, share what is coming up? Yes, I pull it up just as you were reminding me. Oh, yes. Okay. So July 20th, same time, same room. Eve Turner and Damien will be sharing the results from their research on advantage, disadvantage, working virtually in supervision. Uh, August 17th, Samia Kalush. I don't think she's here today. She's going to be talking about how to navigate the lockdown with peace and stability as supervisors. September 14th, uh, EMC Supervisor Competencies. Who is it applying for their competency? Terry, you'll be able to speak to that one, <laughs> your experience. And then October 19th, Cultural Mindset in Supervision. November 23rd, I just confirmed with Karen Pratt from South Africa on transactional analysis. She was going to be one of our keynotes at the, at the conference in Montreal and she wasn't able to travel. So that will be exciting to have her. And then December we'll close out with um, Sam McGill and the poetics of coaching revealed through supervision. And soon we will be coming out with um, requests for speakers for 2021. The calendar is always in the emails that we send out and also will be, is also listed on the um, website as well. And the speakers are based on your offers. Like we have people who would like to present and they, that's the way that we come up with the calendar. So when you receive the invitation, if you are interested, let us know because that's the time where we can set it up for that to happen next year. And also uh, everybody who presented abstract, the way that for the conference, for everybody to know, everybody who presented an abstract this year was accepted. 
So we accepted all of the all of the abstract from everybody to present at the conference. Next year, well, there were a couple that were late, so we didn't accept them. But other than that, um, uh, we did. So we yep. want to include everybody who wanted to present presented. So we wanted you to know that that was based on that 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 in that way it worked out. And uh, next year will be virtual again, April 29, 30, May first. Right, Mary, thank you. So yeah, you um, look for that there. as well. And also we're going to be doing a session with Lily in Mexico City because we heard from Daniel and other people who have tickets to go to Mexico and they cannot change it. So for the people who still have that ticket and still are planning to go to Mexico, we're thinking about having a two-day activity in Mexico City. So we will give you, Lily, do, do, do you have that date in March? Oh, March, yes, it's, uh, it's um, on my birthday, isn't it? Particularly, we have four people here. March 25th, 26th, around that time frame. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. people from Mexico, you know, particularly the ones who live in Mexico, you want to know about that, and people who are interested or still have a ticket or consider wanting to come to have like an intimate group, getting together, not a conference, just a, a work show for a couple of days and we were thinking we really need to focus on coaching supervision group coaching supervision will be, will be the topic okay time flies time to go anything else lily before we go i think that's a wrap unless anyone else has a last minute thought they'd like to share well in case you haven't seen the news um the supreme court ruled that uh, it's now illegal U.S. wide to fire people for being LGBTQ. Wow, that is huge. It is. That it. just came out this morning. Excellent. Thank you for sharing. That's great news. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, and we'll see you in this space in July. Be safe. Good seeing everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you, Lily and Damien. Nice to see you guys. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye. Everyone. Hi, bye. Lise. <laughs> <laughs> Did you confuse? Did you at the end? Yeah. She, just got here. she got here on time for the new one. <laughs> <laughs> I got the timing wrong. I thought it started at five o'clock. I know these these uh anyway, it's nice to see you.